Green light, Master D, bless you, bless you. I'm not sure if you're home yet, safely, but I'm home. God bless you. Just wanna talk to you for a moment or two. <clears throat> We want to thank God for Journey's mercies, for being faithful to us all weekend long. We came back through uh, Canada and has finished our assignment this weekend. And I am grateful to the Lord for His excellent, excellent grace and mercies. One moment. Thank you. He's been good. He's been a good God. He's been kind. And he's been gentle towards us. I want to not prolong. I, I am tired. And my voice is almost gone. But I want to just release this word and um, be intentional about this I was resting this afternoon and, well, sleeping really. And again, of course, the Lord began to talk to me and I felt the need to not only address and continue to address this epidemic that is up on the forefront of the kingdom. And um, it's important that it is observed and it is important that it is spoken. It is spoken of that people may understand the time that we're living in. The Bible lets us know that in the last days that there will be um, not only perilous times, but there will be itching ears. There will be uh, a camaraderie, a group, a people, a great falling away, an apostasy of the church. And this is going to happen through the itching ears. Why the itching ears? The itching ears of these so-called messengers who God have not sent. And their assignment is to cause an implosion and an impaction in the body of Christ and those who God have not spoken to, who do not even know the Lord, will begin to speak as though the Lord have sent them. Now, I really am not going to be long, and I know this is not going to be popular, and it may not carry over as how you want it to, but it's going to stay here as a memorandum and a warning and a release from the throne room of God for God's people to hear. I, I, I don't do lives because I want to be um, popular, liked, or for fame, I do them as the Lord releases me, and they stay online as a testament or until somebody tries to interrupt what God is saying or have said through um, our mainstream media. And so I, I really want to talk to the church and I really want to talk to those of you, especially those of you messengers who call yourselves prophets, that behave more holy than you ought to. You have a perception of holiness, and your perception is a deception. And the people are walking under the deception of your perception. And I'll say this right out the gate. I, I, I do have my sermon. I'm going to try as much not to read everything, but I'm going to skip through it. Um, this was a part of my sermon for Sunday, but I did not get to go there. If you all watch the live, the Lord just move differently in the service there in Canada. And But the, 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 the heart of God has still been um, riveting in my spirit concerning this time. Those prophets, those lying spirits, those of you who have said God have said, 
Those of you who have said God have sent you and he has not sent you. I am going to show you in scripture how God sends his prophets. And how do you know the real prophets that God has sent? And I want the church to hear this message this afternoon as my throat is killing me and I need sleep. And I drove over eight hours last night to get here to finish my assignment and to be home safely. I feel like my heart and my assignment is not finished until I release this word to the people of God everywhere to hear what God is saying. I need for you to know that there are wolves among us. And the truth is, we used to say wolves in sheep clothing, but the wolves are in their vestments. The wolves are in their uh, nature. They are no longer hiding in wolf clothing. They are in the church in plain sight. They are among us and they are wolves. They are showing us that they are wolves. These so-called prophets, these so-called messengers, these so-called men and women that hear more from God and they have a word every day from God and every word that they have spoken is not of God. You all heard of me dealing with these three women that was out in social media fighting against each other for the top prize for the prophet. Not only those three women that are flat out not sent of God, but are looking for a space and a grace to continue to deceive the body of Christ. And I said it, and I will not stop saying it. I said it Sunday. I, I forgot when I was in Canada that there was a particular arena that has been erected by this... Um, prophet and others that have lifted up shrines and synagogues, temples and churches, sanctuaries to fleece God's people uh, and to create an implosion and an impaction based on their um, sorcery. And there are those that will have to come online and they have to create an illusion a delusion, strong delusion that God has sent them and that they are of the nature and the placement of God. I needed to hear this message today and I need for you to send it out loud and clear. I want to let you know the true calling of one that God has called and what is their assignment? Who are the real people of God in this hour? How do we know the voices of God among the voices of hell? Because it seems as if the voices of God have been silenced, uh, silenced by the voices of hell. And God's people have been placed in a corner, jacked up quiet, and have been silenced by these demonic voices and these demonic systems and cisterns, charlatans and those that God have never called. I needed to hear me today and hear me well that there is an epidemic before us. There is an intrusion. There is these wolves that are now no longer hiding in sheep clothing, but they're comfortable in their skin. They're comfortable in their shrines. They're comfortable in their assignment. They're comfortable being wolves. They're comfortable being shafters. They're comfortable being liars. They're comfortable being butchers. They're comfortable being pimps and prostitutes alike. They're comfortable doing what they have been assigned to do through their witchcraft, through their assignment and their knowledge. They are not hiding and they are not shy about their assignment. They are in the church and they have infiltrated the church 
and they have become the church. They have become the new world order in the church. And the church have been sitting on the wolves. They have been sitting on the wizards. They have been sitting on the crafty men and women that have a gift that God has not proven, that God has not called. And they are doing this because the gifts and the callings, they are without repentance and they are not repentative. They have no need to repent. They have no need to change because the church have accepted them and they have fallen under their spell and their strong delusion. I want to show you a real prophet in scripture and how real prophets are called and why are they called and the reason for their calling. And I wish and I hope that you will stay with me for a moment as I really delve into this and I'm not going to go through all of it today but I am going to hit a few points and then I'll come back tomorrow if the Lord allows me to and I think I want to finish out this week hitting this demonic untoward generation. I will be the prophet in the wilderness. I will be the man of God on the wall. I will be the one who cries Prepare he the way of the Lord. I will be the man of God that will tell you that what they are doing is not of God. Today is Monday, September the 2nd, and we're walking into November. And does the church know what is upon us? Do we know what we're walking into? I said it Sunday, you're sending your children to school in a couple of days. Do you know who you're sending your children to? Do you know who's going to be the core class teacher? Do you know what kind of spirit is in the school that you're sending your children to? And don't trick yourself and fool yourself if your children are going to private school. I find that in, in, in the very private school, you'll be surprised to know the indoctrination that happens if you're sending your children to public school. Who are their core teachers? Are you sending your children to trannies? Are you sending them to the LGBT community? Are you sending your children into a shootout? Are you sending your child for the last and first time of the year to school? Will they return back home the same way? Will you drop your children off and pick them up at the morgue? Do you know what time it is? What are you preparing your children for? What are you preparing yourself for this next season? What is before us as we enter this new month? What is the month of November about? And so if your church and your pastor is not sounding the alarm, it's not just to pray and send them out and pray a covering of prayer over them. Let me say this to you, the devil is not afraid of your olive oil and your speaking in tongues and putting your hands on your children anymore. Because if you have devils in your children and you're sending them to the devil's system, then you have to change your tactics. And you've got to be honest to know that you're sending your children that are not saved into an untoward generation that do not know the apologetic to, uh, to, to defend themselves in the word of God. I got to say it for some of you to hear me. Laying hands on children that don't know God and do not want God and putting olive oil on them and speaking in tongues does not change the fact that hell already owns them. They must have a deposit of God in them. They must be a defender of the faith. They must be living Christ-like. If you're putting weave, 
lipstick and eyeliner and eyelashes on them. If you're putting name brand pants and their pants below their backside. If you're putting on them the things of the world. Yet you're sending them out looking like the world. And then praying that the things of God will cover them from the world. And yet they're going into the world that looks like the world. And they want the world. You can't want God for your children. Your children have to want God for themselves. And you must train up a child in the way that he or she must grow. That when they are old, they will not depart from it. You think old mean O-L-D in age. Old also means knowledge. That when knowledge comes, they can stand in the day of the wicked hour. They can stand as old foundation. They can stand as pillar and truth on ground of the word of God. You are going to have to put the old time religion in your new age children. I hear this dumb, 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 wicked, wicked thing that's coming up even in the church. We are now dealing with the Gen Z's. We are dealing with the Gen Z's. When I was growing up, they call us Generation X. The devil is a liar. The word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is no generation gap when it comes on to bibliology, foundation of truth, the word of God being preached to your three-year-old and your 13-year-old and your 20-year-old and your 30-year-old and your husband, your wife, your granny and your grandfather and everybody in between. It goes for your transitioning daughter that wants to be a man and your transitioning son that's behaving like a woman. The word of God is applicable to every condition and if you're sending them out in this hour without the the word of God in them. They must want God. You cannot give your children a pass into glory. They've got to work out their own soul salvation with fear and trembling. There is a world that we're sending our children into. And sad enough, the Christian church, the Christian home have not prepared their children all summer to face what's coming in December. We have not prepared them for what's coming at the end of 2025. We have these false prophets like Celeste and all these other demons on the forefront that has had us so distracted all of the summer and at the ending, oh God Almighty, of the spring of this year that have us in social media, listening to zombies and hearing sexual perverted dreams, saying that they are prophets, and none of them have told you that there is coming a serious hit in the school systems of America, Canada, and the world. They have not told you that there would be a vibes cartel spirit that will be released all across the nation, especially in our Caribbean. They have not told you that there is a spirit of deception in our government. They want us to vote for one thing they present, but they're hiding the hand of that which they're really going to do. What we are seeing in TV land, the policies that they have been saying on both sides of the aisle, it's a lie and a deception. And as a prophet of God, I have come to sound the alarm and to let you know that like Jeremiah and Nehemiah, Yes, and Isaiah, which I'll be talking about in this hour. God sends real prophets in an hour where there is an epidemic, where there is a problem, where there is a problem not in your dream gates, not when you watch TV, not what you listen to, not who you hear coming down, not you coming against preachers, not you destroying altars that you 
know are here in TV land, but the prophets who have heard from the Lord, the prophets who have been in the gap, the prophets who are called to build the waste places, the prophets who are called to cry out and spear not. These prophets have been quiet by these social media sensation prophets. And I come to destroy it. And I come to open your eyes. The reason why you are not prepared, you have been under a strong delusion. And I want to talk to you about a real prophet, a real servant, one who God has truly sent. What does that look like? What does that look like? Why is it that we're not able to pick up what's going on in the church and in the world? Why is it that you can't see the deception behind Camilla? And why is it that you can't see the spirit behind Trump? Why is it that you can't see what's going on with Andrew Olness? Huh? Why do you why you can't see what's coming through Bruce Golden? Why is it that Canada is so busy watching American news? And the flat out homosexual president, prime minister, Trudeau, have the of, of Canada inside up. You're walking on your head and, 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 and you're talking with your foot. And yet you're busy watching other people's gait and getting into other people's political stance and being disrespectful and rude. And you don't know that over your house a spirit is about to slap you in your region, your coast, and your country, and your city. You can come off live now because when real men of God speaks, it does not tickle the ears of you false spirit that want lies and want word to fit your messology. Well, if you will stay with me for about an hour, I want to break this down for you and give it to you how God gave it to me and I'm going to leave you alone. I don't have a Bible on my head to show that I'm anointed. Neither do I carry a prayer shawl. I'm not coming to tell you that I heard the Lord said. I'm going to tell you what the word of God says because the true prophetic word is lined up in scripture. And a real prophet is going to bring Bible. And you do not use the word of God to manipulate people to cover your misology or to bring some of your uh, misogynistic behavior that people be deceived by you to believe of you that God sent you. When he don't, know you. So, there are some questions must ask about a, tr a true messenger or servant of the Lord. I have my notes. I, I really want to try to test the on script because I, 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 I can get very excited and, and, and I want to hit this thing and be very, very sure that I heard what I heard through the word of God. So let me talk to you false prophets that's been prophesying so daily on social media. And you know what's so funny? Why can't you prophesy in mainstream? Why are you not in churches? Let's ask the first question. Where is your church? Who is your pastor? Who is your covering? Why are you so strong on social media? but so weak in the church. How is it that you have 150,000 following, 300,000 following, and you have a word from the Lord and you dream and you call the dream prophecy? Now, I just expose two things that let me know that you are not of God. If you are going to be speaking from the word of God to the people of God, where is the assignment you have been sent? In other words, where is the pulpit? Where is the altar? Where is the church? Where is your pastor? Where is your covering? And most of you young ladies that's out there with your sexual, demonic, perverted self, where is your husband? If you are not under covering, where is your husband? And is your husband in alignment with your harlotry? 
and if E is in alignment with your harlotry, then it means that E is an Ahab. And if E is an Ahab, and you do not respect his covering, and then you're operating under the disguise and the spirit of Jezebel, then you are really not a prophet. In fact, you are against the prophet. In fact, you are called to kill God's prophet. And so you have a disguise and you have an agenda. And so we are exposing your altars. We are exposing who you are. Kingdom in the world that's listening to me. If you're listening to, listen, any church I go to to minister or to preach, my first question is, who is your covering? If you do not have a covering, I am not coming. We have too much wild ass out here without a covering, without a saddle, without brakes, without a steering wheel, without reading the road code and knowing the map of the Holy Spirit driving us wild on our way to hell without a license. And because we like the spiritual roller coasters in church, it is, it is, it is what they call them when you, have, when you have roller coasters and all these things. It's, it's a theme park. It's a theme park out here in social media. Every, just pay your money and let us take you on a wild ride. And your wig fall off and you lose your shoes. You lose your integrity. You lose your assignment. And you come out dizzy. You were once sober. But you got on a roller coaster. With a demon telling you that they are a prophet and prophetesses. And when I see these little young ladies coming out. And there are more women that's following these ladies. Check them out. Their marriages don't work. They don't have husbands. They are not submitted to their pastors. They don't go to church. And they have more dreams than God. And they can quote more scriptures out of biblical foundation. And there's a great following. But the Lord says the great following is the great falling. The greater their number is the greater the apostasy. Tell them I said so. So, you false prophets. Mama, come here please and plug in God, Papi, iPad. I think I'm going to be here a little while. Let me ask you a question. Sister false prophetess. Sister Jezebel. Sister Horlot. Brother prophet. Brother wolf in chief clothing. Charlatans. You old fox. You lying devil. You wicked old prophets. Let me ask you a question. What is God calling you for? Question number one. Where are my daughters? Just write the questions while I'm asking them. Because I come to challenge their thrones this afternoon. Come here, mama. Question number one. Ask them. I just need this portion. If you can find that head for me, please, and plug it in. Write down the question for me. Question number one to the false prophets that's among us. What is God calling you for? Question number two. Is God calling you because you are a worker? Please type it. Because we're coming to mash down their altars. Mama? Marianne? I'm not seeing the charging um, portal on it. Is that the right port? Where's your smaller one? That's the that's my computer. <clears throat> Write down the questions, you know. Write it down. Are you a worker that God wants to use? 
Now, do you believe that he only calls missionaries or does he only call servant? Thank you, baby. Of your coast. Do you believe that God called prophets, apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers? Or do you believe God is only calling you? Do you think that you're more special because he called you? No. Do you even know what God is calling you to? I said, there's what is God calling you for? What is God calling you for? But now what is God calling you to? Come on, you prophets, I want you to answer these questions before I give you Bible and beat you today with it. Do you believe that God is calling you to something? And if so, what is it? Since you say that God has called you, how is it you're not following him and you're following yourself? These are the questions or no? Because every prophet that, God's, that God called, he calls them for an assignment. He calls them to work. He calls them on a mission. And the mission is always about the kingdom of heaven. And when they know that they're called for the kingdom of heaven, they can find biblically what this calling is. Go ye into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, into the highways and the byways, compelling men to come. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound he the trumpet of the Lord. Do I have anybody online that want to help me today? Do you know what God is calling you to? In other words, what is your assignment? What is your watch? Hallelujah. Is it Canada? Is it New York? Is it Jamaica? Is it England? And is it America? And then under what? What level of the anointing? The fivefold ministry gift. Do you operate in the apostolic calling? Are you called to the prophetic ranking? Are you called to the evangelistic branch? Are you a pastor of the gospel? Are you one who is scripted to teach the word of God? Are you a part of the five-fold ministry? What is your rank and calling? Last but not least, why has God called you? When has God called you? How has God called you? I said last but not least, why has God called you? Where, when has God called you? For what reason? What season has he called you in? Now, you're going to be upset with me because I'm going to back up my thesis. And at the end of your calling, I want everybody to write this out. When God calls you, you are humble. Write it, 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 write it. So if you have prophets and seers and, and charlatans and lying prophetesses and all these other voices that is in mainstream media that have no church, have no covering, have no wife or husband without covering out there talking about God send them and they are not humilified and not humble because of the call, they are not of God. The call humbles you. Let me go through this scripture 
and help somebody to understand. We are going to talk about Isaiah. And one of the things that my strongest gift is teaching. It's not preaching. I can preach. But my strongest gift is teaching. I can prophesy. And believe me, if I open my mouth, it's of God. But my, my greatest gift is to bring correction, instruction, and, 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 and decisively break the word of God down uh, and, and, and didactically give you the context and the pretext into Isa G6 and Erta Music of the text that you may understand the who, where, why, what, and when. Interpretation, observation, and application of the text. I can guarantee you, you don't even know what that means. But you're listening to people preaching to you from a Bible that they don't even know how to rightly divide the word of truth according to Timothy. When you look in Isaiah chapter 6, 1 to 4, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it all the way up. I'm going to bring it all up to ver chapter, chapter 1 to 4. And then, and then five to seven, and I'm gonna stop right there and give you, give and rest you there until maybe tomorrow. So please track with me. I know that some of you not won't like this because when you teach, people get bored. If I was prophesying and praying, you all would get excited. But I feel the need to break this down so that those of you that are in your churches and you hear people say, "Thus said the Lord." All those questions and criteria that I just asked, do they cover it? Is your prophet somebody that you can trust? How is their integrity? Do they keep their penis in their pants? Do the women keep up, keep up their skirt? Are they people that, that can submit to pastors? Do they think they're more high than other people? Are they able to submit to delegated authority? Can they take a rebuke since they love to give it? Who is their daddy? Are they integral? Are they people you would run to with your personal issues? Are they feeds? Do they tithe? Do you see them on Sunday? Do you see them in Bible school? Do you see them in Sunday school? Are they in fasting and prayer? Can they pray? Can they teach the word of God? Are they a part of the executive branch of your church? Are they in leadership? Or do they have a local what's a prayer group? Do they have a local women's group where everybody in there is women behaving bad? Talking about having a husband and can't budget a book and is rebellious than a two ghetto bicycle stick in look here you have to begin to look for the integrity of these people that's prophesying stop looking at celeste with the mantle on her head you need to know how she behave after that and i watch when they're prophesying their spirit is wrong they are bold and they're Posturous. You can see pride all over them. Now you all may say the same thing about me. But me, I'm just radical. I tell you the truth. You don't like it tough. But there's love in my heart. And I'm doing this because I want you to know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Watch the prophets that only have one message. Celeste so only can tell you who is going to die. And what's coming down the pipeline that is wicked. But the prophets are to talk to you about the season. What God is going to do. And what to do to prepare for God. When Joseph, when Joseph came to the throne and prophesied to this wicked king. He said, king, there is going to be seven years of famine. But don't worry. There is going to be seven years of plenty. And so when you get into famine, store up in the plenty. So when the famine come, you are not out of place. The prophet must give you instruction for today and tomorrow based upon the God of yesterday. For he changes not. So don't tell me about Zambia. Don't tell me about Kamala. Don't tell me about Trump. And then you leave it. I don't want to know if they're going to win. What is going to happen after they win? So these prophets are fighting for popularity and not giving biblia. 
theology and preparing a nation for what is to come. There are many real prophets in the Bible, but I, want, I, I like Isaiah. So I want to talk to you about Isaiah for a second. Isaiah 6 and 1. King Uzziah died in 7040 BC, and that was almost 20 years before the exile of the southern tribe. Uh huh. That in, 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 in King Uriah's reign, and also called Amaz, he reigned for 52 years. King Uzziah reigned for 52 years. The word Uzziah means sin. Can I teach how I feel it? Sin reigned for 52 years, 7040 BC. And so because when a nation is in sin and when there is degradation around, God has to raise up a prophet, a mouthpiece. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know if I'm going to be able to teach like I feel it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isaiah came after the order of the kingdom of sin. And the Bible said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Oh, come on here, somebody. In the year that sin dies, in the year of a hand. Somebody pray for me. I feel a wind. I feel a wind. I feel a wind. I feel a wind. I feel his presence. Abosh, Abahanda. He can do Rabbi Abahunde. Somebody say yes, Lord. In the year that King Uzziah died, in the year that uh -huh. Sin dies. God is going to rise up his prophet in a time where there is sin and degradation. In a time where sin is at its all highest. We need the preacher of the gospel. We need the preacher of the gospel. Why do we need the preacher? The preacher comes in a time of degradation, separation, impunities, impurity, homosexuality, a backslidden nation. This is the time God is going to rise up a branch from Jesse. He's going to throw his anointing in Bitamara. That it may become sweet again. Hallelujah. There is a need for a prophet in the nation. Not one who watch Netflix. Not one that's going to tell you. About every other prophet's business that's falling. But that the nation will lift up their eyes. And lift up their heads. And begin to turn to God. The prophet must speak to the nation. Until they turn to God. In the year that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Oh God, I'm running again ahead of my script. But I felt like letting you know right out the bat, the prophet must bring the nation on the holy arrest. They must bring us out of our sin. They must remind us about the altar. They must remind us about a God who in times past deliver us out of the land of Egypt. We came from under the Master, we came out of fear, we came out of Egypt, we crossed Red Sea, we brought down Jericho, we crossed Jordan, we saw deliverance, we got fed manna, we saw the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in our midst. And when we crossed through an ep epidemic and a problem, we left pillows and we left borders and we left testaments that those who come after us will know that at this Red Sea Miriam beat her tambourine as we cross over into victory. A nation must know that there is a God who delivers and a God who set free and he never changes and the God who brought Moses through is the God who can bring us through in 2024. There is no more boundaries. There are no more testimonies. There are no more testaments. There are no record left in in our churches today uh, to let us know that God is uh, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, you're going to conference for a prayer and you're going for a prophecy and you forget that the prophecy is still stands uh, for I will make your nation great uh, and as far as your eyes can see uh, the land is yours. Uh, it's not
not only for yours, uh, but it's for Isaac and Jacob and Abraham uh, and Isaac and Jacob's seed. Uh, and the seed is forever. I don't need a prophet to tell me I am blessed. Uh, the Bible said I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Uh, I'm blessed when I rise up. Uh, I'm blessed when I go down. Uh, I'm blessed when I come in. Uh, and I'm blessed when I sleep. Uh, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the marketplace. Uh, I'm blessed in the education arena. I'm blessed. So if the prophets are only coming to tell me I'm blessed or I'm not blessed, they're not needed. Fifty-two years, Uzziah, who reigned in flesh, God brought in Isaiah in the time of Uriah. See, Uriah did right in the sight of God in 2 Kings 15 and 7. However, he was not dedicated as some kings were to the things of the Lord. The high places were not destroyed and the people still burnt incense as God struck him with leprosy. For much of his life because he himself did some of the same roles as the priest. You, 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 Uzziah was a king and crossed over into priesthood. And the priesthood was only for the Levites, the Aaronites. Those of you that are holy, be holy still. Those of you that are righteous, be righteous still. He burnt incense. And not only burnt incense like the other idolaters in the world. He burnt incense in the temple. And God slapped him with leprosy. Make me prophesy this to this prophetic generation. You are going to get slapped. You see you three girls, let me say this to you. Continue with your rallying in social media. A very prominent and evident event is going to happen in your lives that will put a full stop to no madness. People, please tag them and write this word that I have said it this day. The same God that slapped Uriah because of his idolatrous work in the temple like many of you. God is going to put a serious injunction against you and it will be known publicly. Let's talk about Isaiah for a second. Isaiah was probably born in an influential upper class family. He would have been well educated, a prophet. He was a messenger of God and told the people that God, listen to my listen to my text listen he's a prophet okay and he's a messenger for god and told the people what god told him he often advised against relying on foreign powers and encouraged the people to trust god do you see that going on in TV land with these new prophets? Oh, I see a plane. And a plane is going to hit two towers. And I see a bullet coming straight at Donald Trump's ears. And I see that those who took the vaccine, zombies are going to suck the blood out of you. And I see that God is going to, God is going to stand for me because you called me a false prophet. And those of you who called me a false prophet, beware. This is your last time. God is going to kill you. And because those of you did not listen to my word, God is what he was going to do against America. He's going to scratch that. So God changed his mind. He's going to scratch that and do something harder because you did not receive me. Who the backside and hell do you think you are? That God is going to change his mind to kill an entire people because you gave a word and they didn't listen. When the Bible said be instant in season and out of season whether they hear or forbear. 
can I teach this afternoon? I know you I know this is not exciting for you, but but can I teach? He also attacks spiritual decline and empathy and fought against apostasy and apostasy and fought against the many social symbols of this time. Traditions say that he was sawed into two as a martyr under the reign of Manasseh. From Isaiah, we also get many of the messianic prophecies concerning the Messiah to come. So two, if you are a true prophet of God, they go and kill you. They go and lie on you. They go and cut you in pieces. They go and talk about your character. They are going to say what they did not. And they are going to say what they did and have not. They're going to say what they know and what they don't know. Real prophets are going to come under persecution. We are going to lose our life for the gospel. So a real prophet must know right off the bat, you are dead already. And nothing else can kill a dead man. You're dead, you're dead. So you are sold out to Christ. So whether or not they like you, yea or nay. Whether they put you in prison or cut you in half. Like Isaiah. You still have the assignment to preach the messianic gospel. What is the messianic gospel? He is coming. And he's coming back again. And to the line of the tribe of Judah. And his throne shall be established. For a people who have lived holy. And walk in the ordinances of God. Prepare to meet your God. I'm prophesying it in the old. But it shall come to pass in the new. The word of God stands forever. And it never changes. Are you understanding that the prophets you are listening to now. Is not of God am I making my thesis so clear so far Isaiah like Ezekiel and John got a glimpse into the very throne room of heaven when I hear Celestia the demon self I had a dream then I saw you sleep so much And then you call the dream prophecy. I had a dream. And God said, Hey, hold up. The Bible says, In Numbers, Read chapter Numbers 4, 12 and 13. When Miriam and Aaron came against Moses. That's how I know your dream. You may be a discerner, a dreamer, or or or. Or, or word of knowledge or word of wisdom but you're not a prophet the first thing you say that God gave you a dream then you turn it around and say it's a prophecy and then you bring your dream from 2022 and 2020 and 20 all long and then now the dream you had 15 years ago match up with what's happening today and you say I prophesied it you're a liar. Anybody who has a dream and have prevision of what is to come or see or already is involved or have knowledge of a thing that has happened, it means that God is giving you insight, foresight, hindsight of a thing. Why? Because every dream needs interpretation. Vision does not need one. What you see, your vision is you're in the physical and something comes across you. Now, a seer is another level. And every one of those dimensions of the prophetic needs clarity before you speak. Isaiah got many messianic prophecies concerning the coming of the Lord. It meant that God spoke to him in the present while he is physically up. 
son of man, stand up on your feet and prophesy. Jeremiah and the spirit of the Lord took him in the spirit and hover him over the valley of dry bone. What do you see, man of God? Dry bone. Prophesy to them. You are alive. You are physically up when you prophesy. Not dreaming, not sleeping. I'm in trouble. So you dreaming, drunken, sleeping prophets whose dream gates is open after you watch Netflix and Hollywood and zombie movies. I prove something to you. I remember the other day I was watching Lovey. And he prophesied something on his, on, on his channel. I went, he was the last person I watched and I, I was praying against these wicked altars. I went to my bed. The thing he prophesied, I dreamt it. So I got up and I said, God, what does that mean? Because I know that what he's saying is not true. The Lord says, the last thing you listen to before you go to bed, be careful. Because what you listen to the longest becomes the strongest. And Ezekiel chapter 13 will come into play. The last thing you listen to becomes the strongest. And your mind and your spirit is one. Your spirit does not sleep. Your body sleeps. And that's why you have to pray when you go to your bed. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Because your spirit can wander and travel. And they will go into demonic pools and systems. Gate and thrones, minions and dominions. And you will prophesy the vain imagination of your heart. And so the Bible says, and be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove and know that which is the perfect will of God. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. You have to understand what's happening. So most of these people who have accurate dreams and accurate interpretation of what they dream, it is an interpretation of their mind and their heart. So they prophesy according to Ezekiel chapter 13, the vain imagination of their heart. I'm trying to help somebody so that you get out of these prayer groups and these cell groups and these major dirty, nasty, demonic charlatans and wolves that are in plain sight. They are polluting your spiritual gates, your eye gates, your ear gates, your heart gates, and you're going to bed and you have consumed them in your spirit. If you had read the word of God before you go to bed, you will get up with a song on your heart. You will be getting up knowing that no matter who comes in the White House, America is okay. But the prophets have become engulfed with the election. And so they're fighting against each other for power. And they're calling me jackass an idiot because I said God can use Trump and God can use Camilla and if God asks you to pray for Trump, can you pray for Trump? A first lady look at me and said you're an idiot. The bullet that shot Trump should shoot you. Oh yes, first lady. But Isaiah prophesied the things of the kingdom, the messianic gospel, his coming and how he's going to come. And God gave it to him in the now. Watch this. In a time of decline, prophets must bring instruct, instruction, exhortation and comfort. Telling me that God, tell you that God is going to destroy Florida. And telling me that God said because you did not listen to me and you don't love me. God is going to destroy you. Celeste, you're not that important with your mash mouth. You're not that pretty. And God does not want you that much. Not even Mary had the understanding of the assignment that she was carrying. Her job was just to carry the gospel. Not to do what Jesus Christ was called to do. Many of you are doing too much. Mary carried Jesus and did not prophesy.
He prophesied the throne room of heaven. Hear, 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 hear Isaiah's prophecy. The throne was lofty and exalted. It presents a quiet view in Ezekiel and Revelation. The passage talk about the magnificent glitter and color, the fiery bright lights and crystal, the sounds of angels' wings and moving of wheels. My God and his eyes, like Ezekiel, also saw the vision right before God calling him in Ezekiel chapter 2. It must have been a quite spectacular view when the prophets really see and hear from God in the now. There was also seraphim and there was mention only there. The seraphims are uh, uh, eventually flying angels. They have six wings and are in the presence of the throne of God. The object appeared to be to be worshipped and of praise of Christ before his throne. The song that they sing describes his holy of holy. So seraphims flew and they had six wings and they also sang holy, holy, holy. God's creating power is amazing. He creates such a vast vision through the things of visibility and he allows it to be seen in a, in a time there where the world was in apostasy. Uh -huh. There was also vegetation that they saw. They saw animals. Uh, they saw people and even angels. The creation we see around us is amazing and should be enough to lead anyone to believe in God because the prophets saw it and we're now living in prophetic time. So when you see trees and animals and birds and hearing sounds, these are what heaven's music sound like. So like the dew in the morning on the grass and the grass is green and the deer is running and the bear is there and you see foxes and you see the kingdom at vast dimension. That is what heaven looks like. It's beautiful. It's filled with both animals and creatures, spiritual symbols and people. The creation we see was amazing and although it should be enough to lead people to Christ, but the creation we can't see seems to be at least and less spectacular. Verse 3 also show God's extreme holiness. His holiness is so great and it is required for heaven. Isaiah, Ezekiel, Revelation, they do not disagree with what was seen as prophets. Hello? They didn't, they didn't disagree like these three women disagreeing. Seraphims to continually sing forth his holiness. They certainly have a lot to be thankful for. If angels are so thankful and singing holy, holy with their six wings and singing an up and down motion flying before the throne room of God, then what about us who have experienced redemption, salvation and justification? Those of us that have come out of sin and in the marvelous life, angels don't know regeneration, they don't know justification, but they're before the throne giving God praise and thanks and we up here cussing and fighting one another, yet we hear from God. Yet we hear from God. Ah, oh, God help me to teach today. But if they have not a lot to be thankful for, then we have more. If angels don't have a lot to be thankful for, we have more. This is Isaiah's message. This is Isaiah's message, found in scripture. If they can see God's holiness and praise him, we can do more. Yeah. We, not the seraphims, are the ones who sinned and rebelled against God. And we need to be the ones who make God more glorious in our time. 
We are the ones put into this world which he created for us. We are the ones that God, the Son of God, came to give his very life for. And we are in the earth and we're full of his glory. We see his splendor every day. We're seeing what heaven looks like on earth. And this is the time we're bumping our heads, trying to get the first seed to be the major prophet and the one who is more powerful. No, 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 no. All of us, Isaiah's message came to remind us of the splendor of heaven and the holiness of heaven. And that we were made a little lower than the angel, but angels cannot sing the songs of the redeemer. So our holiness must make us become worshippers continuously in his presence. This is what Isaiah came to talk to the church about. Oh, bless his name. Somebody shout hallelujah in your house or type it for me, now, man. I feel it. The seraphims are singing for God's holiness 24 7. What about us? This is Isaiah's prophecy. How much do we sing God's praise? And how much do we exalt and lift him up? How much of our prayers and songs focus on exalting God? And how much is focused on our own needs? Our own life? Our own efforts? Huh? Even many praise and worship songs today focus on how good we are and not how good God is. How we are chosen by God. And we think it's worship. We are ch God chose me to be beautiful. He looked beyond everybody else. And look at me today. God is so splendiferous. Because in spite of my whoredom, he has exalted me above them. Be careful of the worship songs you're singing. Because the worship songs in church, I believe, and has become idolatry in church. How faithful and dedicated we are to who we are. Let us exalt the Lord, for he has lifted me up. Isaiah's message is, how is God holy? In your life. He never sinned. He cannot sin. He is the definition of everything that is perfect. This is God. Isaiah saying, how is God in your life? He never sins. He cannot sin. And he is the definition of what perfection is. He cannot do anything that is unjust. He cannot do anything unloving. He does not delight in people's sufficiencies. He is a standard by which everyone else must measure up themselves. Because of this, we cannot judge God. These days, people are judging or become judge of God and his words and his plan. The Lord told me, and this is what God means. Hi! Let me say it again. He cannot sin. He has no sin. He is the perfect epitome, perfection. He cannot do anything unjust, and he cannot do anything unloving, and he does not delight in people's sufficiencies. And he is a standard by which everything else must be measured. Because of this, we cannot judge God. We can judge people, but we can't judge God. Because your standard is too low to judge God. So when I hear people say, God tell me, say, to tell you, say, and this is what God means. You are a false prophet. Because if he cannot be judged, and if he has never sinned, 
and he cannot be around sin and will not use sin and sin is an enmity to him and it is by the standard that human beings must come up to him and if you're not coming up to him speaking as his behalf behaving like a judge and judging the things of God by the things of God you are now in Inflicting God's people because you feel more holy than thou. I'm talking to you, holy prophets. You think you're more holy than thou. So you judge people because you think you're in the place of God. The Bible says we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus in his throne. Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. That place means seated. It means that you are perfecting holiness. You are walking into truth and light. You are struggling this thing and law called flesh. And you are living according to biblical bibliology. So the seat of God is his word. And you get to judge the world by knowing it, by refuting it, by staying away from it and putting all things that is worldly under your feet. It does not mean that you and God are equal. I think I'm in trouble. I think I'm in trouble. Because these prophets are equal to God, you see. And they want to tell you what God's plan is based on their dream. So God, God take off his humanity, take off his deity, and give you his plan and make you equal to himself. So you can come now and judge everybody like Celeste and, and, and all these other wicked wolves and sit up like they're holy with a prayer shawl on their head and everybody going to hell but them because they're holy than thou. Work the text, Prophet Nilla. They consider if it is far removed from them and only for the people. They consider if it is right or not. Many come to the conclusion that a lot of things are not fair. God is not fair. God, this couldn't be God. God wouldn't do such a thing. Uh -huh. if, 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 if this was God, that wouldn't happen. And, and they wouldn't suffer things. And, and, and they give story or counsel. Uh, and, 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 and they want others to believe what they think God meant. And this was a time that these same wicked people did the same in the book. This very same book of Isaiah. It gives the story of the council of 200 who sat down and vote on sanctions of scriptures. However, this was not their place nor their matter. What God does, we cannot question. And he is the creator. And there is nothing created after it's created. So when Celeste going to tell you about zombies and what will happen, eh? where do you find COVID-19 in the Bible? And where did you see that zombies was going to suck the neck of Christians who took the COVID vaccine? And that this is what. So they sit down and they have their own counsel. And they come back now to mess up God's people. And we like jackasses running behind them. My God, she's so right. What, what she said came to pass. Hold up, I'm coming. I'm bringing it into a close. We were created to serve him and to follow his rule. Not to be a vice president of God's rule. No. Why do people question God and judge God? It's called pride. Pride leads Satan to question God and want to be like God. Pride caused him to fall and God stopped the rebellion. Hear this prophet today. You proudful prophets who think that God... You know, when Lovey come out with his own theology... And when people can't get with him, he says, oh, you guys are babies. Uh, this kind of word is not for babies. Now, if you are a prophet, the Bible said, how can they hear without a preacher? 
And how can they learn unless they are sent a teacher? Then if you're preaching the gospel, come on, lovey, talk to me now. If you're preaching the gospel and people in your congregation is not getting your demonic theology and because they can't get it, you call them baby. Then, 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 then bring the word down to the baby level that the baby can drink milk and not eat hard food since you hear from God so much and your school is the only school of theology and you're going to take 34 minutes to talk about it. did God create sin? And if sin God created, then God is sinful. You ask the people, did God create sin? And they put up the hand and they said yes. And you call the people a liar because your revelation is so deep. God did not create sin because he knows no sin. And sin is not in him. So those of you who said God creates sin, you're a liar. No, if Christians and unsaved are in the midst and you ask a question and you feel as though the question needs theological explanation and backing, why would you call them a baby? And the jackasses them sit there afterwards and let you lay hands on them and they sold two and three and four and seven thousand dollars after you just insulted them without giving them scripture you want to know the epitome of a false prophet there it is pride so what does this mean for us some of it we look and see Isaiah's response but when we can also learn to put God's uh, will above our own God's wisdom above our own God's word above our own and God's commandment above our own ideas. We are now in the vein for true understanding. Refusal to acknowledge God's holiness. It is written in scripture. Uh, and scripture and scripture is the key reason why people misinterpret God's word. The very scripture you know, is the very thing that people are misinterpreting. They think surely a holy God would not. A holy, a holy God would not let you lose your child. A holy God will not let you go through hardship. A holy God, surely, a holy God would not. They think that God's holiness is like their own. So there was one lady who told me that God said, God said to tell you he's tired of you. I said, you're lying, overweight, dirty, nasty prophetess where God never speak to your religious spirit and your barragement of your own ideology and mysticism 